<laughs> yes, man. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I told you this place was special, and that is the exact reason why that is oh, just yes. <laughs> Yes! Welcome back to the roach pit. Oh, wow. Strangely enough, first few steps on this place and it's still got that same feel to it almost that I had 15 odd years ago when I was last back here. And straight away I can feel that it's still got that specialness about it. Wow, what a pond. Oh, amazing. I decided to park in the old original car park. Well, the car, there's three car parks on here now, but I thought, you know, go back into the old original car park. This was the first walk you'd always have to do and have a look at the first glimpse of this place. And well, the trees have doubled in size, definitely. I was staring at a swim that's opposite that one of my friends, Lee Purse, done so well from the slopes back in the day. And it, it felt like this, this stretch of water back then felt like it was a million miles away. But looking at it now, it's probably only about 100 yards wide. Whereas back then it felt like 500 yards wide. Oh, wow. This is amazing to be back here. And uh, I can't thank Alan Cooper enough for inviting me here to do a few nights, which is what we've got ahead of us. We've got three nights on this special place. And um, yeah, I've got here this morning. And first things first, let's go and reminisce and have a walk around the pond, shall we? Wicked, feels wicked to be back. Well, we've gone left on the pond, so we're in the shallow area. This is what we used to call the shallows. Um, and this area that's here is, I believe, called the swimming pool area. Like I said, it's 15 odd years ago since I was here, so I may have it wrong, but I'm sure this was called the swimming pool. And I only ever saw one decent one in there, a lot of small ones. They get in the snags that are opposite, and you can walk round there and you can sort of climb in through the back. Uh, there's a lot of trees that you used to be able to walk up on and sort of they used to swim right underneath your feet, but I only ever saw the yellow fish once down there, never really saw any big ones. I used to get in these snags here, and then you had a set of snags opposite, which is a swim called the Sanctuary. There's a big pipe right in the corner, and they used to love getting in there as well. So, yeah, this was a swim I never actually fished. Like I say, I see that yellow fish once in there, but someone was in here at the time. Um, I see him swim past the front of the swim that's round the corner there, and then sort of followed him in through the back. And uh, yeah, someone was here obviously fishing for it at the time, so I didn't want to disturb him too much. But yeah, that was the only time I ever see a big one in this swim. Right, so this is the back of the swimming pool area. The water's up really high, but you used to be able to walk out on these trees from the bank. Banks obviously used to be half a rod length further, but because the water's high, can't really get out onto any of these trees. But it's this tree that was here, and you could see they're still using this area as well because it's all polished off. It's all clean out there on the bottom. So they're obviously still using these snags, even, you know, 15 years before, it seems like, you know, they're still doing the same old thing that they used to do back then. Oh, there's one, a small one, a small one just here. Yeah, wicked. Creatures of habit, I guess. These are all pretty, you know, there's a few originals that are still in here from back then, but a lot of them are new fish now. And yeah, they're, um, they're obviously still using their old haunt that they used to use back then, which is pretty cool. 
it's not really changed a lot this this shallow end like it's still got that exact same feel to it the trees are obviously a little bit taller but it's still very much like none of these swims are you know they're exactly how they used to be 15 years back proper cool amazing so we're sort of moving out of the shallow area now and this is the channel so it sort of channels down for about 200 odd yards 100 200 yards and then it opens out into a big body of water and you've got an island that end as well and that's a, that's the deeper end of the lake but i'm staring at a swim opposite which i think is called the channel swim and uh yeah it's a swim that i caught the paw print linear out of uh, yeah i remember it really well i was again here with my mate lee purse and uh i chucked a single bright orange one this way towards this swim you know, it's like really snaggy down to this left hand side here, but they never ever, I never saw them along here and they never used to, you know, you wouldn't fish tight to these snags. You'd always be a rod length or two off of them. That seemed like their patrol route more than what it did against this bank. And uh, yeah, I remember one cold March day, that rod busting off and catching the paw print from that swim opposite. And uh, yeah, special one at that. I'd love to be able to, um, give you some photos to overlay of that fish but unfortunately um, I lost a lot of my old photos in a fire um, I won't bore you too much with that story but yeah I lost a lot of my kit in a big fire that I had and um, yeah gutted really but still the memories are still there so we're about halfway down the channel now and as you can see how snaggy it is like all the way along here and I spend hours and hours upon hours just staring down into all of these snags which you would just like to think would always be their home down here but I can still tell by looking at it that the bottom's all dusted over it's just looks like it's not being used at all i might have that totally wrong you know but i may speak to the locals and say oh no they use this all the time now but i would like to think that staring at it here that this isn't being used still and it's madness really because it's such a safe haven for them along here but they would never ever get in here it's really mad and i think it's still the same story and they look so bloody good for it <laughs> Oh, there's what. <laughs> Baxter's garden for everyone that remembers him. But this never used to be. Oh, wow. Well, this is the big end of the lake. So you've obviously got the shallows down that end, then this channel, and then this is where it opens out with the island out to the left-hand side. And this has changed a lot. But again, still got that same old feeling to it, which is weird, I know, but the bank that's on the opposite there, that used to be out of bounds at, and it was all just chisel stones along there. And I think they put them stones on there so you could tell whether people were walking up and down it at night because it's like, you know, walking on a chisel beach. <laughs> so you could never get away with walking along that bank. It was always a bit risky. You've got to the right hand side here, the rat swim, pipes. Pipes used to be the swim because all of that was out of bounds. Most people that, that used to fish that swim i never got the opportunity to get in there would cast onto that opposite bank and then walk walk their rods down late at night but um this is back in the semex days you know this is before alan was obviously lucky enough to get his hands on it and down to my left hand side here, you've got the caravan swim real lovely lovely swim one i spent a lot of time in that one then just round the corner, you've got a slight point there, you've got Webley's there, peg 35, peg 37. And now he's obviously put a lot of trees along that bank there, which never used to be there. And I think looking at it from here, there's three swims there now that you can obviously fish from. So yeah, it's mad how different this end looks, but yet it still has that same feel to it. It's definitely a lot, lot deeper down this. This I remember sort of out, out, out that direction. You had round sort of 18 foots out there, and I'd imagine that's obviously still the same to today. So, yeah, this is cool. Like seeing all of this and my old haunt from up 
this high is um, yeah, special, really special. So I've mentioned the caravan swim, which is just down to my left-hand side here. And that's the one that I really fancy getting in, not only because it's um, an old haunt of mine, of course, but I feel like this is where them big ones are gonna be sat. There's a couple of giants in here. You've got the saddle pack mirror, which recently come out a few weeks ago at 58 pound this time of year. Um, there's a likelihood he might slip up again. You've got another big one in here as well called Big Ears, and um, he's around the mid 50 mark. And just got that vibe, that feeling, the weather that we've got at the moment that this might be where them two giants are hanging about. So I feel like the caravan swim is calling. The swim that I got in then was the caravan swim. Obviously a swim I'm familiar with, although it's now 15 years later and it's changed somewhat, let me tell you. And not only that, the spots have obviously changed, but you've still got that sort of same scope of water out here that you used to have back then. You get a lot to fish to out here. There's a lot of water. You've obviously got that island out to the left-hand side of the swim and then a fair amount of open water out to the right. Now I've seen a few this morning when I was walking round. I like the look of this area anyway. And out to the right hand side in that expanse of open water, I see a load of tent shows out there. But every now and then in amongst the tent shows, you would see like a carp just slide his head out. So that's why I've resided in this swim. It feels it just feels right in here, you know, and obviously I see them fish this morning. I think it's going to be nighttime bites in here, in all honesty. And um, that's what I've done is I've basically set about my ways to get that morning bite. I don't, rushing around, trying to get your rods out and this, that and the other is not that sort of fishing that A, I'm used to, or B, I don't feel that you need to do on a venue like this. I think you need to spend your time throughout the day finding your spots and making sure that everything's perfect for that early morning bite. And that's exactly what I've done. So on the right hand rod, I had a good lead about out there. Now there's, what we used to do is actually fish fairly close into the right hand side here because you're sort of almost on a little bit of a point here. And I think the fish that come out of the channel, they used to hug this margin quite tight. And there's some new eel grass that's growing up out to the right hand side of the swim. So they must not be using that. And you'd like to think that they'll either go one way or come in tight to the bank. So I've gone for the slightly longer option of 12 wraps. And there's a lovely spot out there. You've got a couple of pine trees out far in the distance and one of them's flat topped and at around about 12 wraps out there there's a lovely lovely area where the lead just sort of smacks down and then you drag it back about half a rod length and then it ends up into that new freshly growing eel grass so that's one of the spots and what i've decided to go with is a natural approach on that one now it's worked really well for me all winter still feels like winter i don't even think we've had a spring as of yet so I've put out there a solid bag that's got squat inside it. The hook bait is a little 10 mil PB with 10 squats sat on top of it. And as you drop the rig in, it's actually like clawed over. Now on this venue, you're allowed to go out in a boat. You can drop with, if you like, drop your, you know, your rig down with it. But I feel like I want to be able to car. I want to put a marker float out there cast out to the marker flow. Obviously I found that spot, 12 and a half wraps, well it's 12 wraps exactly, sorry. And I've popped a marker float up. It's eight foot deep out there. But what I've done is I've slightly dropped the motor. So I've had a good lead about without the float on, found exactly where I want the rig to go. And then I've, I've put the marker float to the left hand side of the spot. Cast from the bank, so wrap me rod up, cast from the bank, I put a solid bag out there, it landed perfectly to the right hand side of it, and then I've decided to go out in the boat and bait up via the boat. 
So for anyone that doesn't know, it's my first time in a boat with a bloody oar. So normally got the old engine on the back. So this is all a bit new to me. So I'm just having a go one-handed to see how easy it is in this little boat. Yeah, it doesn't feel too bad, even with a little bit of breeze on the pond. So yes, we're uh, slowly getting the rods out. As you can see in front of me, is a little spot out here at 12 wraps and I've already cast one of the rods to it. You can use both hands now, Lee. Um, and yeah, so I've basically, I've chucked a PVA bag out here. My old favorite squat and caster mix, some crayfish mini mix in there. So there's not a lot of rules on here, but one of them is no plastics, no leaders and no, what was the other thing? Zigs, that was it, no zigs. So you're allowed to go out in the boat, drop from the boat if you want. But I thought because the spot's not very far out, I thought I'd cast me solid bag. I've had a good lead up round here. There's a lovely little spot out here. So I just cast me solid bag to the right hand side of this float. And I'm just gonna go out now and bait over the top of it. So. It's quite nice out here, you know, not having to spot for hours on end and annoy other people, of course, with all your spotting and what have you. So yeah, just sort of drift out here nice and quietly. Bait up over the top. Get back to the bank, get the other rod out. Yeah, lovely. It's old uh, Simon Crow in that swim over there. So here we go. It's quite murky here, all the weed had strong smell of carp in it so it's just basically down here I'll scatter all this about on top of the flow here This is yeah, like worm and caster mix going down in the water there. Looks bloody lovely in the water. Nice, can't quite see the bottom. But yeah, that is lovely jubbly. Rod number one done. This beautiful pond that is the roach pit. <laughs> Lovely. Not much undertow, which is nice. Sort of watching the bait as it goes down to see whether it sort of drifts off, but it doesn't. It sort of stays exactly where you throw it. So it's not a lot of undertow, which is ideal, especially with this sort of bait. So, happy days, buzzing. There's a fair bit of eel grass about, sort of out, out there, sort of just behind the spot as well. It's a um, bit of eel grass coming up and it stinks of carp as well. So nice little spot there. Right, let's get back to the bank. Okay, so for the middle rod, out to the right hand side of the island, it's almost dead at the swim that's opposite. There's a bit of a gap there in the trees for you to aim to. There's a lovely clear sort of, it's like an old plateau that, well, it's not old, it's, it's well, I suppose it's old. It's what a feature that was always there that when I used to fish a swim back in the day, that, that was always a feature out in the swim. But it used to feel like it was a million miles out. It was one of them, you know, you come back to a venue 15 years later and you're like, cool, that island's got a bit closer, but it hasn't. It's just that, you know, your kit's evolved and this, that, and the other. So yeah, I've chucked out there, 21 perhaps. I used to struggle in the day to get out there that far, let me tell you. But yeah, 21, 21 wraps out to the, this swim that's opposite. Same procedure as the right hand rod with the marker float. And then I've cast from the bank. This time I've decided to put a Roddy rig on with a 12 mil milky malt out there. And then I've gone back out in the boat again, same procedure, like I said, with the right hand rod and decided to bait that one. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is just bait up just with these 12 mil SLKs, just around the hook bait, sort of 
not concentrate them in one area, just sort of spreading them about a bit. Got them soaked in corn juice. So spread them about like so, keep fish moving about. And then where the rig is, which should be just to the right of this float, is where I'm gonna put some corn in them, so. Bit of undertow out here, sort of coming towards me slightly, so chuck him out a little bit further. Beautiful. Jobs are good in. That two Z bank. So that's, you know, a little mix up. I'll put them 12 millers out there, sort of scattered the 12 millers about a little bit more just so that they're picking up in a different area. And then where obviously the rig is, I've decided to put a couple of scoops of the old hemp and corn out there. Now to the left hand rod, left hand side of the swim, on the island in the center there there's a tall tree and again this was a spot that was back in the day it's fairly deep out there you've got about 11 12 foot of water and there's a lovely sort of it's a silty area but but you get a really decent drop on that one so i've just decided because it's deeper water and because it's a fairly big silty area i've just congregated the hemp and corn in like sort of one zone it's not it's, i've not spread it about like i did with the middle rod i've decided to sort of keep it in one zone and i've put over there like a little dumbbell pb wafter on that rod ronnie rig again but it's actually fished hard on the deck so i've got sort of three options out there i've got three sort of tactics as such, free spots as well. This isn't, I don't feel this is that type of lake where you would want to fish free on a spot. I'm not saying that wouldn't work, but I feel like, you know, having three different areas gives me a better option for getting that bite in the morning. Half time's on then for the mighty Arsenal, beating Chelsea 3 0. It's what we like to see, it's what we like to see. <laughs> so, just come up to the watchtower overlooking the lake just to see if there's going to be any evening shows. There's been a lot of evening shows on a lot of the other lakes that I've fished the past few weeks. So, just thought I'd uh, take advantage of this tall tower here and you get to see like pretty much this whole end of the lake from up here and um, yeah whilst we're waiting for the boys to kick back off might as well come up here for 15 minutes have a watch and um, see if there's anything showing oh I thought there was one then <laughs> it wasn't it was cool but yeah how about this for an awesome view this is off the chain here Got big moon out tonight as well so you never know you know what happens on a big moon Nothing. <laughs> no, to be honest, that, the last giant that I had was on a full moon, so it's not quite the full moon yet, but it's a lead up to it. So there's always hope, and there's a big 55 pounder in here that's due. Old Big Ears. Let's hope he's listening. After a bit of a quiet night, our right hand has busted off. We are playing one. 
come in fairly easy. Let's hope it's not a bloody tench. The sun is blazing in my eyes at the minute. So I can't really see a lot out there. It's just in front of the swim here. Oh. what we're after. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Other than don't ever come back again. <laughs> he's, he's a lovely tent, really. <laughs> Size of him. The monster in the making. Just finished me breakfast there, nice sausage wrap as you do. And uh, we had a little visitor this morning from a red eye on the old right hand rod, absolutely busted off. And at first I thought it was a carp because, because of the bite. And then sort of playing it off, oh, he's coming in a little bit too easy. And then in the end, it was a tench. But yeah, just got that rod redone. I was really sort of hoping that early, early morning this morning that, you know, we'd see a few and that we'd uh, hopefully get a bite from a carp, but not the case. So I'm not too worried at the minute, in all honesty. I've been chatting to one of the other lads on here, sort of through Instagram, and he's sort of saying, oh, it should be up the other end in the shallows. But I don't think them giants are gonna be up there. I've, I feel like they would be in this deeper area still. You know, it's not mega deep, you know, I've only got sort of eight foot on the right hand rod and then sort of 11 foot out to the left. The water is freezing, freezing cold still. I know the sun's out and all that, and maybe they would, but I don't know, I've just got that feeling that this is where them giants are gonna be hanging about. So I've redone the right hand rod, obviously, after that tench and just put it on the exact same spot. Same procedure as what yesterday was, the old solid bag with the squats and the caster in there, a little bit of crayfish mini mix, and the old uh, PB pop-up with the squats on top of that as well, and that's obviously what's done us the tench bite. So, you know, tench are bloody hard to catch half the time with carp gear. We've all seen it, where they do you over left, right and centre and pick the rigs up and what have you. So, you know, getting that bite from that one just gives you that little bit more confidence that not only am I presented, that, you know, you can if you can hook a tench, you can hook a carp. So, it's uh, yeah, it's one of them. Yeah, so not only did we have that tench, uh, just now whilst I was cooking me sausages, I've had a liner on the left-hander as well. So. Less hope that that's Mr. Carp milling about in the area, fingers crossed. But we'll see how the day progresses. I'm going to try and keep it all nice and quiet out in that main body of water on the left and middle rod for today. And then I'll probably, as, as the evening comes, get them all refreshed, ready for the morning. Don't think I need to put more bait out there. I think I'll just refresh the hook baits, have another recast with them later on this evening so that it's ready for that morning bite. So just refreshing these rods out in the open water here. Um, I sort of thought, shall I do it, shall I do it? But again, you know, going back to that early morning thing, I think that's when the bites are going to be coming, is in the early morning. So got them in, got the right hand rod actually. That uh, went with a tench, so that one's already been done around about midday. Had another tench on that rod, so I've already redone that one. So I'm just refreshed the middle rod, put fresh hook bait on, chuck the marker float out, and I've cast from the bank the hook bait as well. 
So I'm now just heading off out into the pond to just chuck a little bit more bait around. The birds have been, well, a bird. The coot's been hammering me all day on this rod. So I'm just gonna refresh it a little bit. I've had my SLK soaked in that sweet corn juice overnight. So they're smelling absolutely gorgeous at the minute up there and just like say, refresh what the birds have eaten or birds eaten. Fresh hook bait on there, ready for tomorrow morning's carnage, we hope. That's what we're hoping for. Chaos, all three rods. Um, it's not that sort of pond, obviously, but you know, to get one out of here, you've got to do everything in your favour to do that. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Just coming out here, refresh all of these rods. I'll do the left hand rod as well but I won't put any bait over the left hand rod because it's in the deeper water. Birds haven't been hammering it. So I will end up just refreshing the hook bait on that one, have a rechuck with that and, uh, and we'll go from there. So we're just approaching the marker float now. And then like I said, I'm just gonna scatter a few more SLKs about the place, only little 12 millers and a little bit of corn over where I think the rig's gonna be. So that's the case at the moment. So we're just approaching the float now. Out here. Yeah, I've not seen anything today. I've had my me, me eyes fixated on the pond for most of the day, but not seen anything. Right, we're at the float now. Just scatter a few of these SLKs about the place. do us sorted right back to the bank get the left hand rod done like I say I'm not going to put any more bait out over the left hand rod no need and we'll just um, refresh that hook bait did have a liner on it this morning but other than that that's the only activity that I've had and I put you know a fair amount of bait over that rod so in theory there's no real need to put any more bait out of Phil. So we'll just refresh that hook bait and then get some dinner on. I know what I haven't had a bite. The tone, the high pitch tone should be on the left. Now we're getting a bite. This is the left hand rod that's gone off. First time this one's gone over all of that corn and hemp that I put out there. Refreshed the rod yesterday, just chucked it out, didn't bother rebaiting it. Yeah, it's just pulled up tight and gone. And we're open. And it's a carp, fingers crossed. And not a tinker. <laughs> Right and left quite a bit, which would indicate carp. Let's hope it is. Yep. 
lovely one there. One of them Tony Campbell's. <laughs> yes, man! Yes! Oh, yes, yes, yes! God, you know, I've been sat here all morning just like, should have had a bite, should have had a bite. We've had a bite. Yes! Oh, yes! We've got one, son. Oh, I've just lost my line clip. No! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, it's a proper banger as well. Oh, shut up, mate. Oh, that's enough to make you want to throw up it's that rice. <laughs> oh, go on. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, get in. Oh, yes. That's the rod that we least expected as well. Yeah. Yeah, man, this, although this morning, so they were slicking up out on my long rod. I thought they've got, and I'm sure they were going from that rod to this rod here, because this rod started slicking up this morning, which it hasn't done. And because I've got that oily emp out there, it started slicking this morning. And I'm like, I swear they're on that. But then you don't know whether it's tench or not. I've had three tench bites now. So you're a bit like, oh, is it tench? Is it not tench? Well, we've got carb now. Let me tell you, it's uh, oh, just, I'm, I'm, wow, just absolutely elated that we've got a roach pit carp in the net. Yes, yes. Oh, man. Oh, well, we've just landed that absolute lovely one. I've put the net cover around so we can just chill out in the net for the minute. I've got a bit of a dilemma now. I'm like, I put obviously about three quarters of a bucket of corn and hemp out on that spot and i don't think they visited it the first morning but this morning they definitely did there was a couple of slick ups on it and i was like you know thinking it's gonna go this rod it's gonna go but nothing come of it and then out the blue we've had this bite off of that rod which was probably the least likely rod i thought would go i thought the long rod would go because i had a similar thing as well this morning few slick ups and on the first morning on that one and i got up at just gone five this morning to hopefully see a few showers and chris the bailiff who's round to the right hand side in rat he said he saw one bang on my spot on the middle rod this morning at about five so i just missed that one because he said the coot come out and started hammering you didn't it and i i saw that coot so it was like are they going from that spot oh it's slicking up now out there Right, okay, well that's that's decided it for me. So it's slicking up on the left. So I'm basically what I'm trying to get at is what do I do? Do I just rechuck this rod like I did yesterday and not put any bait out there because of the amount of corn and hemp that I put over that spot? Or do I redo it again? We've only got one more night left. So now seeing it's slicking up now, that's decision made. I'm just gonna chuck this rod back over the top and not put any bait out there. I don't really wanna go out there in a boat disturbing the zone sort of thing. So you've got to really think about your fishing on venues like this. This is why I love place, fishing places like this because you've always got to be thinking all the time. It's not a case of just putting three on a spot and putting 20 spots on it and waiting for them to rip off. You've really got to think about your angling and yeah, I'm sort of, I was in two minds whether to do what, but now that I've just seen another slick up over this left hand rod, that's decision made. I'm not gonna put any more bait out there. I'm gonna get me a little PB wafter out there, just a little dumbbell wafter, sort of pretty much imitating the corn that's out there. It's on the Ronnie rig, so it's actually fished on the bottom on the Ronnie rig. So yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, God, I can't wait to get this fish out and see him. But I want to get this rod back out in the zone at the minute, because there might be a group of them there. It's just slicked up as well, so they could be on the munch on that spot. So let's get this rig ready, get it fired back out onto the spot. Buzzing, <laughs> absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, that's the one. 100%. That is the one. See, I told you the alarm tones were the wrong way round. Didn't I? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Right. Let's get this special one out. Something that I see all the time on vids, which just grates me, is people not zero in their sling before they weigh their fish. They weigh the fish with the sling and then say, oh, I've got to take the sling off and it's four pound this, that, and the other. Zero the sling first, please. Everyone, just zero it first, and then you'll get a true weight of your fish. So that's what we're about to do now. I'm gonna zero this. So press the tear button. We'll wait until the sling's not blowing in the wind to get a true weight. So there you go. And once he's blinking, then you know that your sling has been zeroed, okay? Easy as that. Hello, it's me. I caught you from the caravan swim at the Roach Pity. If you can collapse this whilst that's on. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh God, that is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. In you swim, in you swim. Lovely carp, he's in my sling. Coming out of all the lyrics here, you. Right, double check them fins. Roll him, double check again. Sorted, zip him up, safe as houses. Oh, oh, yeah, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's 32 4. Oh, yes. Right, well. I told you this place was special, and that is the exact reason why. 32 pounds of roach pit magic. That is one serious, serious carp from a special, special place, and a place close to my heart. There's only 120 odd fish in here in around 30 odd acres, so every single capture is special, but this one is just that little bit extra special. What a welcome back to the roach pit and I just literally lost for words with an animal like this in my hands. Just incredible. Roach pit magic, yes! That is oh, just, oh. <laughs> well, here's the other side of this special, special creature. Ah, oh, wow. Just unreal, just unreal. You know, I'm blown away with something like this in the hands. I really, really am. From such an iconic and special venue like the Roach Pit, you're just absolutely magical. Thank you, darling. You special, special carp. <laughs> wow. All right, let's send her back. Oh, absolutely phenomenal. Go on then, darling. Thank you very much for the visit. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Get in there, man! This is the rig then that's caught me that special 30 pounder. And we'll start off with the actual hook bait itself. That is a PB dumbbell wafter. And the rig itself is the Ronnie rig. So 
I'm basically fishing the Ronnie rig, but wafter style. Now, the only difference that I have with the normal Ronnie when it's popped up to this one is I just move that bead a little bit further back so that it's almost opposite the point of the hook. So the actual hook bait is secured on with a bait swivel, little tiny little mini bait swivel that is, and obviously the bead is keeping that in place. The hook itself is a size six wide gape hook and then that is onto one of our Ronnie swivels with the ring. Now the material itself, that's the Link Trans Khaki in 25 pound. And what I've done is I've crimped both ends of that. So I've got a nice little loop there. You wanna make sure that when you do crimp it, that the crimp, the opposite side to the loop is flush with the tool so that when you crimp it, the other side's got about half a mil stuck out. And what it will do is flare it out so it takes the contours of that loop perfectly. I've got a nice big blob of putty there as well. That's covering the actual crimp itself. I like that because if they are feeding hard on the bottom, I don't want the rig moving around a lot. So having that huge bit of putty there that keeps the rig pinned down in position, not only that, it helps aid with hooking properties as well. And then the other end, it's just finished off again with the crimp. So it's another loop on there and then with a tungsten anti-tangle sleeve. And then the lead arrangement, that is a slick lead clip there. I've got a naked tail rubber and the reason why I'm using that is because leaders are not allowed on here, so that you know tapers off nicely onto the 20 pound Exocet Pro line, main line that I'm using. Four ounce lead, nice big heavy lead to send that hook home as well. And that's the setup that's done the do for me on here. Well, the heavens have just opened up and we were meant to do an update with a celebrationary Keskins as you would do in Ringwood, but we got way too excited about it and ended up eating it and not doing the update. So here's the update in the rain. Now I've left the rods as they are. Now earlier on, obviously this morning I had a tench on the right hand rod. So I rebated that one and I've just left it. There's no need to redo that one. Now the middle rod, um, as you may have seen, after I'd had that bite, I decided to change that rig over, well, not change the rig as such, change the hook bait over from that white pop-up that I was using to one of the PB dumbbells. Now, I actually went out there in the boat and dropped the rod via the boat, which you are allowed to do here, and just dashed two handfuls of corn over the top of that rod and then made my way back. It's in the exact same spot that I was fishing, obviously, 21 wraps out, to the right hand side of the island but I wanted to go out there and feel exactly where the hard spot was because I think there's a little bit of silt out there there's a little bit of ill grass as well so I wanted to make sure it was dead clear and that's what I did and it was like two foot to the right hand side of the float dunk that one down put a big six ounce lead out there because if I'm coming back in the boat via one-handed if I had any dramas I didn't want to drag the lead so that's a reasoning for the big lead out there and then the left hand rod I just kept it the same. We chucked that rod straight back out after having that fish and it busted off within minutes. But unfortunately, it come off like nothing happened. Lead was still on as well, so which is a little bit mm, one of them things. But I've just dashed that rod back out there on the same spot that I had the bite from and not bothered putting any more bait out. If we had two more nights to go, then I would put extra bait out there, but we've only got until midday tomorrow. So I've just chucked that back out as a single in the hope that there's still a little bit of hemp and corn out there. Right, the rain's getting heavier. I'm going to retreat to the bivvy and we'll see you when one of them rods sings off sometime soon, fingers crossed. <laughs> Go on, the big one.
excuse the bed head. I'm having a lie in this morning. The right hander has absolutely fizzled off. But this is the one that's obviously gone with tench every morning. So is it an angry tench or is it a carp? You'd like to think that a bite like that would be a carp. He's now weeded himself up as well, so hmm. Could be a carp, maybe. Well, it was a tench in the end. Damn, considering that bite that I had off of that rod, thought this has got to be a carp, surely. But obviously where the rod butts on in a bank stick or, or a buzz bar, there um, the clutches are nice and loose because obviously I don't want one of the rods being ripped in. And yeah, the tench bites have felt more like carp bites, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to bother replacing that rod, to be honest. We've got three hours maybe left and I've sort of run out of naturals bait on that rod anyway and it's you know it's just done me nothing but tench in all fairness so I've got the two rods out there at the moment obviously that left hander um, that we had the bite from yesterday about half an hour ago we heard one show out to our left hand side which sounded like giant but I've got some trees here so I couldn't I didn't see it just saw the aftermath of it but yeah sounded like a good and that so fingers crossed they're working their way round I think since I've been here I've sort of I think what they're doing their route they're taking is about two rod lengths off of that island and I think they're going sort of you know just circling round it just because of like watching the water for the last three days and the slicks and where the slicks have been coming up you know it sort of starts off well it didn't start on the left hand it started on the middle but then you'd see the slicks further and further back so I think that's the sort of route that they take here in the sort of springtime this time of year sort of thing but it feels mega for it it does you know We've got a low pressure front coming. It's been raining all this morning and it just feels like a giant's gonna turn up any minute now. So we've got a few hours left to hopefully get one more, but even if we don't get one more, one fish from a place like this whilst you're filming is special in itself. Well, that is the end of that. Unfortunately, they haven't turned back up today and our 72 hours on the roach pit has finished. And I oh, just, it's been so special. It really has. I think I, I mentioned at the start that I was invited on by Alan, but that's not actually the truth. I begged him to let us come on and shoot this film. And I'm so glad that he let us come here and, it's amazing, like I said at the start, the feeling that you still get from this place, even though it's changed a lot for the better as well. You've got a car park, two car parks at either end now, and it's still got that special feeling about it that it used to have 15 years ago. It's absolutely amazing. And I hope that I'm lucky enough one day to get the opportunity to come back here again, because it really, really is a special pond. So I can't thank Alan enough. The waiting list is actually dead man's shoe, so I wouldn't even bother trying to get hold of him to get a ticket. And I think he made sure that I would mention that in this film, <laughs> that, um, that yeah, there's a long, long waiting list on here, but you never know, someday I may get that opportunity again. In the meantime, it's time to bid the lake farewell and head off home. So buzzing we got one. I'd be gutted to be packing up now without that bite. That'd hurt me, really hurt me that, proper.